Hey guys, this is Mac and Zanon with our second assembly tutorial. In the last tutorial, I taught you about your processor, your memory, and some of the assembly language. Today, I'm going to be describing more in detail the code we wrote last tutorial in assembly, and I'm going to be introducing some new code as well. So, let's get started by looking at the code we wrote last assembly tutorial to refresh our memory. So, this is a program that just returns the number zero. It has approximately seven lines of code, if you want to count this blank line, and it's eight. So, the thing is that this is the line of code we focused on last tutorial. Today, I'm going to be focusing on these two lines of code and what they do. Now, before you even understand what these two lines of code are, you have to understand something about every process that runs. So, let's think back. Every assembly program can access any part of memory. The problem with that is that two assembly programs might accidentally bump into each other in memory and start overwriting each other's data. Programmers don't see this as good, and so everyone came up with a solution to this problem that's pretty, pretty simple to grasp. And that is something called the stack. A stack is a pointer to a place in memory that every application has that's unique to them. This place in memory will only be used by them and is has a limited size but is for them only to use. So we use stacks to store all our applications data normally. So that's what that's what stacks are for. So before we even go on even farther, the reason we have to put this at the beginning of every function is for one reason that you'll understand in a second and I'll explain it to you. And it's the same reason we have to put this at the end of every function before the ret statement. So, right here is a move instruction and right here is a push instruction. So you guys already know what move q does. It moves 64 bits from the first value into the second value. So that means that rpp will equal rsp. So what exactly is the importance of this? What are RSP and RBP? RBP is the base pointer, so that's the top of the stack. That's the first byte of the stack. Or it's the pointer to that anyway. RSP is a pointer to the last byte of the stack. So that way everything in between and including RBP to RSP is your application's data. You, you can also subtract from RSP to give yourself more room. So the stack starts at somewhere, then you subtract from that somewhere to get more space on the stack. So here's the start, how the stack starts. EBP and ESP are the same. They both point to the first byte of where you're allowed to write on your stack. Let's say we added two values here. EBP would still point to the first value, and then there would be two more values that let's say are both eight bytes considering this diagram I made and assumes they're eight bytes. So ESP will point to the last byte and EBP will point to the first byte. So every time you add an object you want to subtract from ESP and then put it at ESP. So that that leads us to this push queue instruction. Push queue adds eight bytes to the stack and so it's adding RBP to the stack and subtracting 8 from RSP. Okay, so why, why do we put this at the beginning of every function? That's the, another question. And the reason is that the assumption that every function is being called by another function. This isn't always necessarily true, but it's good to, it's good to keep under these concepts. So say you're in a function that has a stack that looks like this. Then you want to call a function. Do you really want the function to see EVP up here and to see everything you put in your stack? Well, the answer to that is no. So what this does right here is set the top of the stack to the bottom of the stack. So essentially, if this is your function stack, here's ESP, when you call another function, it turns EBP into ESP. So that way there's the, only the top of the stack. So 
this essentially gives you more room on the stack for your function and and doesn't let you see what was on the stack in the function that was calling you. But why do we do this? Why do we randomly add the place or the top of the stack is to the stack? And the answer to that is that when we do this, we're changing the stack around and we're getting rid of what the function that called us um, had set up in the stack. The thing is that they might want that feature back. They might want their stack to be back to normal. So what we do is first we push the top of the stack to the stack. Then we move the top of the stack to the bottom of the stack. This leave then gets this back from the stack and sets it back to RBP. So that way the function, when, when we return to the previous function, its stack will be the same as it was when we left. So that's why you do this, and that's why you do this. That's just a brief explanation, and you can ask me for more details if you don't quite understand. So I'm going to move on. So the next thing I'm going to teach you is something called calling. So right now we have a main function. There are lots of other functions that come with GNU, which is, you know, what Unix, Linux is, that, that are useful. And the function, if you've done this in math, has things you pass into it. So, say you have a function that takes two numbers and adds them. A function has a return value, which is put into EAX, and as many parameters as it wants to have. We're going to today be learning about a function called putS. So to just call this function, we do call underscore put s because the name of the function is underscore put s. In C, it was put s, but when you compile things in C, it adds an underscore under them to make sure that you know that you're calling a C function. And this code right here will, will call the function. The problem is how does put s know to, to what to print out? And that's where parameters come in. So up here before the global main, I'm going to do a few things. Um, and I'll explain what I'm doing here in the next tutorial. Let's get rid of that. Alright. So put s requires one parameter and that parameter it's is expected to be put into the rdi register so to do that we do the following leak leaq lc0 parenthesis rip right parenthesis then we're going to move that into rdi then we're going to move 0 into eax it's just because that's the convention you normally would do. And voila. You'd think this would work because this would load, and I'll explain this later, this loads Hello World into RDI, basically. And then it calls this. But the problem with it is that we still haven't done one thing that's mandatory for calling functions. And that is that your stack has an extra 16 bytes on it. So to do that, we subtract... 16 from the stack, just like so. Sub Q stands for subtract quad. So I'm subtracting 16 from the quad RSP. So there we go. Now, if we compile this, we run it. It says hello world. This is our hello world application. In our next tutorial, I'll explain this to you, as well as this in more depth and this to you. So that's it for this tutorial. So um, you can Google this, personal message me if you want to know now, like how everything works, and I'll try to help you with that. Anyway, thanks for watching, Mac Kids 101. Subscribe and goodbye.